Hello there. My name is Eric Enloe. I'm the Dean of Handong International Law School. This is our, our beautiful campus. And I'm, uh, I've got to hurry along because I'm just on my way to torts class right now. Uh, torts class is a really important subject for Christian law school because it's, it's about when people have done something wrong and people go to the court and say, give me justice for the damage you did to my body or my reputation, please. Uh, help me, give me compensation. Uh, we've been studying it all semester this year out of this book. I think you'd probably find it pretty interesting. If, if you'd like to learn more, we're gonna have a class. Why don't you come along? Come see what it's like. All right, I'm gonna go off. See you soon. Okay, here we go. So what is the issue that the court discusses in this case? I think um, one of them is that whether it is possible for a third party to bring cause of action for breach of contract um, when there's no privity of contract that exists between them. Good. You said this was a case where the legal issue is whether you can bring a contract action. If I'd wanted to answer cases like that, I would have taught contract. <laughs> the issue here is a cause of action for... Lydia, what's the name of this course? <laughs> Torts. Torts, exactly. <laughs> the, the, the question is not, can you bring a cause of action for breach of contract? What's the answer to that question, by the way? Can you bring a cause of action for breach of contract if you're not a member of the part of the contract and you're not a, a direct beneficiary? You cannot. You cannot. The next case in our in our book, uh, Raphael, could you help me out with this, this yes, case? Yes, no problem. Okay. What are the facts in, in MOC? The facts are very similar with the previous case you studied. Uh, so we have a plaintiff and defendant, and the defendant had a contract with third party. This plaintiff was injured from unforeseeable, unpredicted disaster, but uh, plaintiff argues that uh, the performance of the duty the defendant owed to the third party could have stopped this disaster, so his non feasance is liable for my damage. Is that a relevant fact? It is not relevant. The law, in other words, is a seamless web. If you pull on any one part of the web, all the other parts of the web readjust. The, the rule of privity was originally put there to keep a separation, to keep an independence between contract and torts, to create a separation that allowed freedom of contract. When it's removed, uh, then the parts are drawn together uh, inevitably. Thank you all uh, for your participation today, especially to uh, Lydia and, and Raphael. Thank you very much.